today we're going to be setting up a very special GA. Most of you will know that you can color your model by whatever parameter you would like. In this case, we're going to color this model by phase. I'm going to go over here, say all, color by class, change that to color by phase, and you'll see that I've got gray, blue, red, and green. So gray in this case is phase one, red is phase two, green is phase three, and blue is phase four. I'd like to do something similar in my GA drawings. I'm going to start off by going into my GA settings and loading up my 3D because this is the base I'm going to be using. And I'm going to change this to 3D by color. 3D view number three, 3D view by face color for this specific one. Now there's a couple of other parameters I will need to set, but I'll leave that for in the drawing. Makes it a bit more easy. Next, I'm going to create the GA, open that up and create. It does have a lot of colors already, blue outline, these lines are green, and this is mostly a special fill with a green line, brown GA, uh, brown grid lines, green numbers. And that's because colors usually have a weight assigned to them. Let's head over to the print menu. You might need to open up your drawing manager and head on over down here, the print. And in here, if we take a preview of our drawing, You'll see that printing this in color gives us all of this. Where normally I prefer printing it in black and white, you definitely want this color. And over here we've got our line weights. So each line has a different thickness it prints in. And that is one of the main reasons why we changed the grid lines to a brown, because that is a thin line. Whereas the green is a medium. And of course, the black text is also a thin line. Now, for something like our dimension lines, we would be using black as well, which is a thin line, titles being bold at a four. That gives us different line weights to work with and gives us a nice depth to our drawing once it's done. For our current purposes, we don't want any of that. We want everything more or less the same line weight because we want to just give them a pure representation. In order to not lose these settings, I'm going to start off by saying Fort GA and saving that as my print settings. In here, open folder and finish. Cool, I'd like that. If I do output this to a single file, I want something like my project number, project name. So that'll be the 1234. I want a space. I want to say GA drawing ref dash hash hash. Okay, so this is the standard format I would like my GA's name to be saved in if I do combine them. I'd also like my drawing to be black and white, rotation, auto and auto, that's all good. And it doesn't have to be output to single, but just having this set up, even if it's unticked, will mean that if I do tick it, it will get the correct name. Once all this is done, I'm going to go back here and say save. This is all good. Let's change this back to color. Head on over to line properties. Black is a basic color. We do not want to use that for our bicolor GA. So I'm going to ignore that one. Green we are using as our title block down here. So what I'd like to do with the light green is I'd like to change this color to print black. So what this will do is once I print, this will print black. And that's the reason for the separation between the light and the dark green at times. You can see this is still green and you can even make it a brighter green if you want to. Apart from that, I think everything else we can just set to a three. Do we still need to use brown, green and magenta? I'd actually like to use magenta for my color by face filter, so I'm going to say this needs to change. Brown is a fairly neutral color. I think I'm going to be using that as well. So for this one, I'm mostly just going to be using black and green as black. Everything else is going to be the color they are. Then I'll go up here and just save that as by color. Now that this is done, Never press save on this after recreating the drawing. The two most important things you will be doing is setting up the pod colors and the filters. After that, we'll be combining them in the object level settings as we did with previous into the filter. All we want to do is say if the pod phase equals a number, then it filters it out. 
I only have four phases, so I'm going to do up to phase five, but I would suggest going through and making up to phase 10. That way, once this is set up, you do not have to come back and reset it. Next, we'll go to part, and we're going to say currently we want to use the whole part solid system, which is solid color. And for this solid system, I think we would like to use the green because that's going to give us a nice thick black outline for our part. Uh, we'll use the black over here because that's going to be a thin black outline. And then over at the color, we're going to start with red. So we're going to call this part solid red. Now this light green we need to skip because this is getting converted over to a black. The blue, save as, cyan, now the dark green does not get converted, so that means we've got a nice green to work with. That's through all the colors, grays I'm just going to ignore for now. And I'm going to cancel because I do not want to change anything over here. Now that we've made both the filters and the parts, let's head over to edit settings. Currently we've got our 3D GA. We want to save a new one that says GA by color. I'm going to save as just to get it started off. All that I would recommend is try not to put two colors close together. I'm not going to put a cyan next to the blue. I'm going to try orange enter just to keep them separated. That makes it a bit easier to find if the differences are stark. Now, once this is done, we can save it. We're going to modify and this will change all of the stuff to that. As you can see, even the existing changes color. And that's because I've taken out the original filter. I'll go and put that back existing part existing just check it right up at the top and that'll bring it back to that half invisible now normally i would take the existing and put it into something like phase 99 because i know i will never use phase 99 for anything else but that is not necessary you can keep it to the phase of whatever is around it and just use this to phase it out in the drawings now, once that's done, we're going to save this and close that. Let's open. Yeah, we're ready. Let's open up our drawing list by going to drawings list, grabbing that and saying print. We're going to do this by color. And we'll see that everything has been colored nicely, but our main drawing outline is still blue. Nothing I can do about that, unfortunately, as Techno does not allow you to go and change that line color or anything else about that line, which sucks, but unfortunately that is what it is. Once all this is done, let's print this up and see what it looks like. Here we go. Now we've got a nice GA. A bit of the blue, we've got the green. As you can see, the magenta over the red is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit too close together. Although the rest does lend quite a nice contrast. So for something like that, I might then go change the parameter on this. Let's just get this off to the side, minimize that, head on over here and say, right, that will work, save it. So now if we bring back our print menu, give this a print, open it up, this looks a lot better. It's a nice contrast to anything that is next to it, close to it, and I think this looks good. Cool. So that's how you make a drawing that is colored by a parameter. Uh, phases is usually good for figuring out where what goes. Uh, you can do it by name if you've got a very specific naming sequence or a prefix sequence to use. Um, if you have assigned dates to your items, 
you can do a filter by dates. Now the next thing over here is add a nice legend in here, something that tells them right this color means this phase. And for one last time, let's print this and have a look at what this looks like. That's it for today. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you learned something. And I'll see you all next time.